<laughs> okay, Austin. <laughs> okay, you have a question, Mike. Go. All right. So I often wondered, you know, there's something called the sound barrier, right? And I always thought when I was a kid that the sound barrier was just a, a particular speed. What is the speed of sound? You know it, right? 760 miles an hour. Yeah. It varies with temperature. So when, we'll when, when Chuck Yeager was trying to break the speed of sound, I thought he was just trying to get to that speed, right? Just yeah. like if you wanted to, you say, I want to go 100 miles an hour in my car. You just are trying to get to that speed. Sure. But apparently there really is some sort of barrier at that speed. There is. And so what is that barrier? And why is it tied to the speed of sound? Like what is this? Why does it matter how fast sound travels through air as to whether a plane can go that fast or not? Right. Okay. I had no idea you were going to ask that question. <laughs> Luckily, I have a drawing on the board to perfectly explain it. Okay, so let's look at me shouting, ah! what is sound? What am I doing? What, when I'm screaming at somebody, well, what, what is sound? They're waves going through air molecules. How fast do, air, do, how fast do waves go through air molecules? Well, you just said it, 760 something miles an hour. The speed of sound. Yeah, speed of sound. The speed of sound. How does it happen? Well, what is a wave? This little molecule, he's like, oh crap, somebody pushed me. Boom, he bumps into the next one. Oh crap, somebody pushed me. Each little air molecule has a little exclamation mark over it. He says, oh, somebody pushed me. Let me push the next guy. Oh, somebody pushed me. Let me bump into the next guy. It's just like dominoes, right? You push one domino, it knocks into the next, which knocks into the next, which knocks into the next. It's straight up dominoes. But now it's just air molecules. Each air molecule bumps into the one in front of it. How fast does it go before it bumps into the one in front of it? Eh, it varies with temperature, but it's around 760 miles an hour. That's how fast sound goes. You see, the speed of sound is how fast one air molecule moves forward to bump into another. All right, then why do, how does that slow my plane down? Well, let's take a look. <laughs> Here's an airplane going... And then going what in. happens once I'm past this supposed barrier? You're going to find out. So this is an airplane going below the speed of sound. Now, as I have drawn many times on this whiteboard, there's all these streamlines moving around the wing of the airplane. Now, here's the thing. You cannot instantly accelerate anything, right? The, the faster something accelerates, the harder you have to push to do it. You agree with that? The faster mm -hmm. you accelerate something, the harder you have to push yes. to do it. Do you agree that nothing can be accelerated instantaneously because the force required to accelerate it would be infinity? That's right. Yeah. I mean, like, you know, the Tesla Roadster, 0 to 60 in 1.9 seconds. Oh my God, it's fast. But the 0 to 60 time will never go to zero <laughs> because the force required to be infinite. Yeah. And, and you would be dead too. Oh yeah, you would, yeah, <laughs> of a less important nature. Uh, so um, nothing ex changes its speed instantly. It accelerates over time. And the faster it accelerates, the more force is required to accelerate it. So if the wing is gonna have low drag, then it needs things to get out of the way gradually, right? Okay. Things need to get out of the way of the wing, air, air needs to get out of the way of the wing gradually if the wing's going to have low drag. How does the, 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 air, uh, the air get out of the way gradually? Well, it starts moving before it gets to the wing. Notice that the air is already starting to split apart before it gets to the wing. That is that mm. nice, slow acceleration. Well, how does the air up here know to start getting out of the way of the wing? Well, all the molecules behind it are pushing, and exactly. so I guess there's high pressure in that area, right? Right. Well, it winds up being low pressure as it starts speeding up, but yeah, there's some high pressure right around here. So actually, yes, yeah. yes, there's high pressure at the second point. Words, this little atom is kind of bumped by the wing. See, so it kind of bumps this way a little bit, and that kind of bumps into this atom and says, oh, wait, we got to get out of the way up here. And this kind of bumps into him and says, oh, wait, we got out of the way back here. In other words, the kind of the pressure waves are being propagated forwards from the wing, because otherwise, how could an atom up here know to start getting out of the way well in advance? And how fast is this information propagated forward? At speed of sound? Yes, of course. The speed of sound is a wave. It happens when I yell and the pressure oh. and each atom bumps into each other. And it happens when a wing is coming along. So the, the closer you get, get to the speed of sound, the less the air is getting out of the way because it's not getting the message fast enough. That's it. You got oh. it. That's it. The information is propagated forward at the speed of sound, 
when the wing is going faster than the speed of sound, the air cannot get out of the way any, any faster because the information isn't propagated forward at any faster than the speed of sound. In other words, the only way an atom can know to get out of the way is if the pressure wave or information comes at it and hits it before the wing does. Since that information is transmitted forward at the speed of sound, the wing better be going slower than the speed of sound if the atoms are going to have time to get the message and start getting mm. out of the way. In other words, you're, it's like imagine running down the road and you're telling people, get out of my way, get out of my way, get out of my way. Well, if your message to everybody to get out of your way is going forward at the speed of sound, you better be going less than the speed of sound yourself if you want anybody to get the message before you and have people out of your way. Hmm. Now let's say I'm running forward at faster than the speed of sound. And I'm sitting there yelling, get out of my way, get out of my way, get out of my way, as I'm running on the road, but I'm running faster than the speed of sound. The sound, people behind you are hearing it. Yeah, the people behind you are hearing, that's great. But I'm running into people as I'm running down the road, just knocking people out of, this, uh, out of the way, like basically instantly. Imagine the drag penalty of running into all those people. Mm. That's what happens with a supersonic airplane. Now- That's your barrier. That's your barrier. That is your barrier. Now, here's what really happens. Now we're, now we're gonna go into a little more detail. What actually happens is a shock wave forms. And here's what the shock wave does. This airplane is now going more than the speed of sound, okay? This molecule up here, he has not gotten a message. He has no idea a wing is coming, right? Because information is transmitted forward at the speed of sound. The wing is going faster than the speed of sound. This, this, this thing might be just a, a foot or something in front of the wing, have no idea what's happening. It's just sitting there completely still. This is like the, the slow person in traffic or the slow person in front of you in line at the checkout count. It's just like, duh, you know, just in the way. This guy's, he doesn't have any reason to move. He ain't talking to anybody. He doesn't have any reason to move. He doesn't have any reason to move. But at some point, the atoms are just piling up here against the wing. And they're piling up against the wing so much that they form a shock wave. A high pressure region is formed here. And this shock wave comes off the wing. And the shock wave is the point at which all of a sudden the atoms start bumping into each other, basically, behind the shock wave. And beyond, behind the shock wave, the speed is less than the speed of sound. In other words, all the atoms change their speed from above Mach 1 here to below Mach 1 behind the shock wave. And that's assuming it's what's, what's oh. called a normal shock at a 90 done. degree angle. At an oblique shock, it's, it's not quite. So now we're getting really into the weeds technically. But the shock wave changes the speed of the atoms to be closer to the speed of the airplanes. So for you to have lift, doesn't the air have to flow faster over the top of the wing yeah. to produce lift? Yeah, and it still does. Right. For example, in this case, uh, you know, maybe you're Mach 0.9 here and Mach 0.8 here. You know, so there's uh, still a little more speed oh, on the top. So there is a okay. right. Now, and to be clear, the so-called normal shock, which is like at a right angle to the air, that will turn the, the, the flow on the other side of the shock into subsonic. A so-called oblique shock, which is at an angle, it still has supersonic flow on the other side. Okay, so I'm kind of munching my oblique and normal shocks here just for the purposes of discussion. Uh, and comments on YouTube video may reflect that. But in the general sense, because information is communicated forward at the speed of sound, these atoms did not get the memo. They're about to be involved in a massive traffic accident. And so this guy has all these, these uh, atoms basically piled up in a high pressure in front of the wing. And once they hit that, the shock slows these atoms down from supersonic down to sonic, or put another way, changes them to the speed of the airplane. And uh, now we're getting to the reference system, airplane or airbase reference system. I'm not going to try and do all that right now. But uh, it basically it slows the atoms down compared to the airplane from a supersonic to uh, probably more of a subsonic speed. And then you get into things like compression shocks, where shock waves are kind of forming on the leading edge, and you have expansion fans where the air goes to like a suction or a lower pressure behind the wing. And now what you've seen is all these, these atoms are piled up on the leading edge of the wing behind the shock wave, and there's all this suction from the expansion on the back of the wing. Think of the drag. Think of the drag associated with piling up all the atoms in front, having all this suction behind, and creating a shock wave that departs the vicinity of the wing. The, um, the drag is just is phenomenal. So what happens that. when you get to what Mach 1.2, let's say? Does anything change? Uh, it's a, it's a little bit. It's a barrier, right? Yeah. So when you threw the barrier, are you past all that nastiness? Kind of in a way. And here's something that, no, I mean, in a sense, no. You're still piling up the, the atoms like this. So in that sense, no, you're not past that nastiness. 
but all the fighter jets in the world that can get through Mach 1 can at least make it up to Mach 1.2 or 1.3. Why is that? Why is it that it feels like a barrier, even though it's just a point at which it gets a lot harder to go fast? And the answer is, once you start coming up through Mach 1, your engine starts taking advantage of all this compression to mm. give you more thrust. Oh. You see, when you look at the engine inlet, let's say here's the engine of a fighter jet, okay? Here's the engine, fire coming back. And the inlet, you know, here's, here's the inlet like this. The, uh, there's a normal shock here, right? This might be, you know, Mach 2 for an F4 or Phantom or something. And then that's Mach 0.5 after you had a normal shock in the inlet. That's a tremendous amount of drag. You've just taken the air from Mach 2 down to Mach 0.5. But imagine the pressure, the, because you've just gone boom and slowed that air down and jammed up all the atoms together. Now you have this huge pressure in this inlet. Think of what the engine can do to develop thrust with all that pressure. If mm. the engine and the inlet, not just the engine, but the inlet are designed properly. And it's been said that the purpose of an engine in a fighter jet is not to propel the airplane, it's to keep the appropriate pressure differential in the engine or in the inlet, in the inlet to propel the airplane. And so if you look at like the curves in the inlet and the speeds in the inlet and all that, you can actually determine how fast a fighter jet's gonna go, not based on the thrust of the engine, but based on the pressure in the inlet. And so the engine is almost like a pump that's trying to maintain a pressure in the inlet to keep the airplane. That's one way of looking at it, okay? I know there's gonna be tons of comments saying, oh, you're wrong. Well, I'm not exactly wrong. There's just a lot of different ways to get to the same well, answer. Well, look, you're simplifying this for yeah, the average I'm simplifying. Joe. Right, and I'm also bringing up some fascinating points. If sure, F equals M dot delta V. In other words, yes, you, you expel fuel and air out the back, and that's equal to the, you know, the forward motion of the airplane. And all these other ways of looking at it are all true. It's just um, there's a couple different ways to look at the supersonic flight problem. But to answer your question, is it a barrier? And the answer is, yeah, it kind of is and it keeps it, but it's a barrier where you don't just go past it. The faster you go, uh, the more draggy it gets. It just doesn't feel that way because your engine inlet can start using this to give you more thrust as well. And yeah. so you kind of keep on accelerating once you get through that Mach 1 as your engine inlet really starts working properly. So right. anyway, that's it. How fast can an airplane go? We, we basically always travel below the speed of sound for efficiency because that's how fast the air molecules can get out of the way. How fast the air molecules get out of the way? Well, as fast as they do in a wave, which you can see by shouting. All right, that's I it. feel like I'm smarter than I was 10, 15 minutes ago. Well, there it is.